Okay, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I believe Lewis has joined us. Let me look here for him. I still see people signing on here, so bear with us, everyone. Lewis, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? All right. Yeah, I hear you loud and clear. All right, everyone, welcome to the CEO Roadshow webinar series where we feature small and mid-cap stocks that may be undervalued or have a, other upcoming catalysts that make them a potential long-term investment opportunity. Today, we're joined by Mr. Lewis Hoke. He is the CEO of UCO, a leading fintech integrated payment solutions provider that trades in the NASDAQ under the ticker USIO. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Lewis, but before I do, everyone, please note uh, at the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A button. Feel free to click on that at any time. Type in your questions uh, during the presentation, and we'll try to answer as many as we can uh, at the very end. Um, Lewis, I'm going to uh, turn it over to you and just uh, let me know and just say next when you want to advance to the next slide. All righty. Thanks, Mike, for having us. Um, yeah, Mike, you can go ahead and flip through a couple of screens here. There you go. So UCF is a cloud-based fintech payment processor. Um, we process payments for companies and banks and and uh, various merchants all across the United States. Um, one of the things that makes us different than a normal payment processor is that we focus on being diverse. And, and diversity for us means diversity in industries that we serve and diversity in the payment channels that we offer. We believe it's really important for the consumer to be able to decide how they wanna pay or how they wanna get paid. And, and we saw that this, uh, this advantage really served us well during COVID, um, during 2020. Because we were so diverse, you know, we were able to grow revenues in 2020, uh, you know, uh, over 2019 um, during a, in a tough, difficult time. Uh, and so the, uh, fluctuations in the economy really do not affect us uh, much. And we're able to continue to grow our business. Um, we have very little retail exposure, pretty much none. And, you know, our, our competitors tend to focus more on, on niches and, you know, hospitality, uh, restaurants, you know, travel, stuff like that. And they are really affected during uh, economic downturns. So as we look forward to, not forward, but as we potentially are going into a recessionary period, um, our company will continue to do well because we're in a lot of non-discretionary uh, industries. Mike, can you go the next one? Um, our company is is really focused on growing top line growth um, and uh, top line revenue, and we've done a really great job at it. We'll see in a couple of slides later, but um, we've had uh, continuous quarters of positive cash flow and except for last quarter where we had our largest customer uh, go bankrupt, um, which you'll learn through this presentation, we've already uh, replaced that revenue. Uh, and it took us a whole quarter to replace it. So we'll it show you the power of our business model and the diversity. Um, so we're gonna be back on that positive cash flow, uh, you know, quarters um, you know, next quarter. So, um, we uh, experienced 92% revenue growth tw over 2021 over 20. Um, we're also going to experience a dramatic growth this year. Um, out of that 92%, 48% was organic. Um, uh, we're projecting 18 to uh, 12 to 18% uh, revenue growth this year. Um, our you'll learn later in our balance sheet that we have a very clean balance sheet. We have only about sixty thousand, eighty thousand dollars in debt, uh, which is actually a physical machine in our print house, uh, and uh, everybody's common shareholder. We don't have any overhang uh, where it comes there with our capital structure, and insiders own a, a significant portion of the company. Mike, can you go next? Um, oops, past one. Or did you go to? There you go. So our, our, our revenue, uh, again, we've been focusing on top line revenue, growing it re very strongly, uh, aggressively. And in 2023, is even going to be more aggressive. Um, but we've experienced 30% uh, uh, compact, compounded annual growth. 
Okay, Mike. Um, did we skip the transaction screen? Let's see. You can go, no, go back a couple. This I one? We, I think, one. Yeah, that one's great. Oh, that one. Um, there's two operating metrics that we focus on as a company, uh, and both are important to us. Uh, on some of our business lines, we're in a transaction fee uh, or a click charge for every payment we process. And you can see that grew 94% uh, last year. Uh, it will grow nicely again this year. And then dollars processed uh, on some of our business lines, uh, we uh, earn a percentage of the transactions. So dollars is important going through our system as well. And then Mike, I think you go to the four business lines. There you go. So we have four business lines or operating units within our company. Again, it's all part of our diversity strategy to be able to deliver uh, payments uh, and accept payments from many different payment channels. Um, and we're gonna talk about each one in detail. Mike, can you go next one? So payment facilitation is card processing, it's credit card and debit card processing. Um, it also has some ACH involved. Um, being a payment facilitator is not easy uh, to become an entrant, uh, entrance into the marketplace. Um, it's not traditional payment processing. Um, we work with, or we only sell to integrated software vendors. So those are companies that develop software for a specific industry vertical. Um, those companies integrate with our rich tech stack uh, and it makes it look like that software company is a payment processor. And we share revenue with that ISV. Um, so we've become a new revenue source for them. We have innovative technology that lets us do real-time enrollment of merchants. So one of our uh, example of uh, an ISV for us is a company called Practice Suite. And they have 20,000 doctor's offices that run their software. And their software runs the whole office from patient management to their employee management, you name it. But part of it is uh, billing and collection. And so they've integrated with us doctors when they sign up a new doctor's office do all the doctor has to do is push one single button and we're hitting about 28 databases real time and to determine that that doctor is who he says he is and then we're able to turn them on to process payments immediately um, because we house the merchant accounts here in in house the mids and the tids is kind of the technical term but it allows us to do real time uh, onboarding of customers. And that's a huge advantage for these software companies. Um, again, we, we love this business uh, line uh, because it grows three ways. Uh, we can grow as we add ISVs, new software companies. And then those software companies are continually adding new uh, software users or merchants on their platform. So they become an extension of our sales force. So that's the second area of growth. And then the third area of growth is that these merchants hopefully are growing organically. So we, we think of this business line as kind of the gift that keeps on giving once we make one sale with a, a software, uh, integrated software vendor. Um, this part of our business will continue to grow even if we didn't make it a single sale uh, to a new ISV next, you know, next year. Obviously, we're not going to do that. We're going to continue to make sales, but um, it just helps you understand the power of of this business uh, line for us. And again, we have no, no retail traffic here. So this is, this is healthcare. This is a lot of taxing entities across the United States, you know, counties. Uh, we recently announced we signed uh, Los Angeles County, which is a very large account for us. Uh, and that just went live at the end of uh, September. Um, and we're processing all the fees and fines for uh, LA County. Uh, so if you, you know, if you have a parking ticket or, or some type of court fine, uh, we'll be processing those payments. But on all, another part of our business, which we'll soon to talk about, uh, we're, we're actually printing and mailing the notices as well. So we uh, have a nice revenue stream from LA County. That's a good example. 
Um, and uh, payment facilitation is a big growth engine for the company and will grow greatly next year. Can we go to the next one? So ACH processing is direct debits off of uh, your checking account, your savings account, uh, debits and credits. So we push money out as well. Um, we have significant scale in this part of our business. This part of our business, uh, if we were a bank, we'd be the 50th largest bank in the United States based upon the volume that we, we uh, send through the Federal Reserve. And that, because we have so much volume, we pretty much have everybody's uh, checking and savings account. So because we have that data, uh, we're able to tell our merchants up front if the transactions are good or bad. And that's pretty powerful for us. Uh, we're also certified by NACHA. There's 9,000 third-party senders in the United States, which includes banks. And there's 10 that are certified by the regulator, NACHA. And out of those 10, eight are payroll providers, which is not our industry, but two are payment processors. Because we're NACHA certified and because we have so much volume, we actually have our own bank routing number and we have direct access to the Federal Reserve System which gives us a big advantage uh, compared to our uh, competitors because we get to hit all Federal Reserve uh, time frames. So you go to the next slide. So prepaid card issuing, uh, we're a true uh, prepaid card processor and program manager. So we issue cards for many different use cases. Um, our primary revenue source for this business line is uh, government disbursements. Our platform is live in over 200 cities in the United States, including seven out of the top 10 cities in the United States, like New York and LA and uh, Atlanta, Philadelphia, you know, uh, Houston and others. And we distribute funds for these governments for many different reasons. Um, and is a big part of a prepaid issuing. We also provide cards to top 30 universities in the United States, uh, top four drug manufacturers. We do their clinical trial cards. Um, we also have some retail names that you would know like Open Table, uh, where you can redeem your, your loyalty points for an Open Table MasterCard. We have unique technology in this part of our business that allows us to push a card directly into your phone, which uh, our competitors can't do. And so it allows us to do specific promotions for specific use cases. Um, and, uh, and it's been a big, big advantage for us. We do a lot of virtual cards. Um, and actually we do 52% virtual cards and 48% physical cards. Um, the way we make money in this uh, space is Every time somebody uses their card, either online or swipes, uh, we're earning about one to two percent interchange. Um, so, as as cards spent, again, we earn a percentage um, on the promotional cards, you know, rebate cards and and government disbursement cards. There's often spoilage uh, where people do not use the money on the cards, or they they leave money on the cards at some point in time. Uh, we start capturing those funds as revenue. Um, a program that uh, exp started expiring at the end of September uh, for New York City's vaccination program, they actually sent out $90 million in, in uh, incentives. About $72 million were spent, $18 million still on cards that will uh, spoil over time. And, and Q4 will be our first full quarter of that spoilage, um, we did have one month worth in Q3. So to give you an idea that spoilage and interchange uh, prepaid makes up a, a good part of the business. Next slide, please. Output Solutions is uh, our print house and we only print first class mail. And the first class mail is invoices and it's bank statements and it's uh, utility statements, uh, tax notices. Um, this year, we printed all the, the voter registration cards for the state of Texas is a good example. Um, for our bank clients, we're printing statements, loan notices, uh, anything, anything that comes out of a bank. Um, but one of the things that makes us significantly different than our competitors in this space 
is before we print anything, we make it electronic. And so we have a huge database of PDFs. And we take that database and we deliver uh, for banks and for utilities, actually the electronic statement that you'll, you know, you often see on a, on a biller's website where you can download your PDF. And then for companies like the utilities, a lot of times we're adding payment to that statement as well so that you can click and pay that bill online as well. This part of our business has been outperforming our expectations and it just continues to grow and generate a lot of cash for our company. And, and the margins are actually uh, expanding as well as we go into uh, more electronic delivery of, of statements. So, and the next. So, um, obviously, if you're an investor, you're going to spend a lot more time than the slide on our on our revenues and our income statement. But we've been doing a really good job uh, generating adjusted positive EBITDA, um, and and this year will be no different. And if we go to the balance sheet, next slide. So our balance sheet, we have about over $5 million in cash, uh, our last reporting period. And, and, you know, it's more than enough cash for us to generate, uh, continue our growth. Um, and it, this Q4 will generate a lot more cash and be back into our positive cash generating uh, scenario. So we'll continue to grow that. Um, on our balance sheet, again, our balance sheet's very clean. We basically have no debt. Um, but we do have two items that's kind of unique to our balance to our company. Um, we have restricted cash and the associated liability with that. And restricted cash is two forms for us. It's it's cash that we're holding uh, that are merchants funds that we haven't distributed yet. Um, so if you process payments with us on a Monday, we're probably not paying you until Wednesday um, for risk management. So that those funds sit in our account for a couple of days, we do earn interest on those. Um, but we also have a big segment of this cash, about $10, $12 million um, that is long-term deposits where we keep uh, reserves on file for our merchants uh, that uh, helps us mitigate risks. Um, so on those funds, uh, we're earning nice interest rate on. And, and of course that interest rate will go up with you know, the, the inflationary pressures. And the mic. Our, our senior management team, and hopefully you'll get to meet us uh, in person at some point at a conference or uh, in, a, in some type of discussion, but um, here's our management team. And then Mike, one more time. And in summary, you know, we're a company that we have, uh, great products and services. We're continuing to grow. Um, we provide uh, our customer bases, you know, it's AIG and it's it's Time Warner, T-Mobile, um, it's Charter Communications. It's companies that you would know. And uh, we continue to have a blue chip customer base and we work with a lot of non-discretionary type of payments like utilities and mortgages and insurance and tax tax payments. Um, so we're kind of insulated from uh, any type of economic downturn. And Mike, we have questions now? Yep, we do have some questions here. Okay. Uh, first one comes from Joel. Uh, he asks, what were the biggest contributors to your record revenues last year? Um, well, the biggest contributor was payment facilitation. Uh, that business segment that represents, you know, forty percent plus of our our revenues. Um, and you know, there wasn't any specific industry. Um, the large customer that we lost was in the crypto space. Again, we've recovered from that. So, and it, and it only took one quarter for us to replace that revenue. But they represented eight percent of our revenue in twenty twenty one. All right, thanks, Lewis. Uh, next question comes from Edward. He asks, are you able to facilitate cash transfer transactions like PayPal, Cash App, and others? 
So that that's money transfer business and and we do not. Now we have customers that use our technology that does. And you know, that's part of our rich tech stack and it helps other fintech companies deliver uh, services like that. But we we do not have a consumer facing product like Cash App or Venmo. Uh, we do do pinless uh, debit transactions, which is how the uh, Venmo works, where it sends money real time. Uh, and we're going to be doing more in that space uh, with the FedNow project, which will be real time payments. And then the clearinghouse, which is what Zelle runs on. So you'll see us do a lot more uh, real time payments uh, as, as we evolve. Okay, thanks, Lewis. Uh, next question comes from Brian. He asks, uh, what are the biggest changes or trends you see emerging next year for payment processing? You know, um, one of the trends we're seeing right now in kind of a tougher uh, economic times is that we have a big segment of non-bank lenders. Uh, and, you know, a lot of these are fintech uh, lenders. And a lot of people are borrowing money. And, and so that generates a lot of transactions for us. Um, on the macro level, uh, it's probably not the best thing you want to see. Uh, but the other trend that we're seeing is not only people borrow money, a lot of people are not paying it back. So what's that's caused in our, our world is that we're processing a lot of return electronic check transactions. So we go to debit somebody's account on behalf of these lenders, and then there's no funds there. And that part of our business is hitting new highs, um, dramatic new highs. And it's really good for us because it's super margin. Uh, it costs us about 25 cents to process one of those. And you know we sell them for a buck and a half to $10. Uh, on those types of transactions. So while the transaction growth is great for our company, I don't know if it's great for what it's saying about the overall economy. Thank you, Lewis. Next one comes from Rodrigo. Uh, he asked, do you think the recession will put pressure on your earnings next year? So no. And uh, again, it's all about our diversity strategy. Um, and again, we have no retail traffic. So if people stop spending, um, we're not in those industries where they would stop spending. Uh, okay, next question from Daniel. Uh, he asks, um, next, what are the biggest challenges for merchants and their payment processing? And what is UCO doing to help address them? So, you know, the, the biggest challenge for merchants is being flexible on how somebody wants to pay them, or if you're a government or, or somebody dispersing funds, how they wanna receive them. And, and again, we have a wide variety of payment channels. Um, for example, if a government wants to disperse funds, uh, the, you know, they send us a message and we'll text or email that consumer and they get to choose. And they're presented with a list of you know, do you want a physical prepaid MasterCard? Do you want a virtual MasterCard, you know, that'll go into your phone real time? Or I want it to go directly to my Chase debit card, you know, so we'll do a real-time pinless transaction. Or I just want a traditional ACH, you know, just pop it into my checking account or savings account. Or, you know, I, I'm somebody that really wants a physical check. And, I, and believe it or not, uh, we print over a million checks a year uh for this purpose and it continues to grow so the flexibility uh doing what the consumer wants instead of dictating to the consumer uh is is very important for merchants okay thanks lewis um next question comes from john he asks uh what are your top revenue generating products so uh in in order payment facilitation is the largest uh, ACH is the second, our print house is third, and uh, prepaid is fourth. Now, over time, we believe that payment facilitation and prepaid card processing 
will be our two largest growth engines. Thank you, Great. Uh, and last question comes from Nathan. He asks, can you tell us more about your new point of sale credit solution? Yeah, so um, we're doing point of sale credit. Uh, and, you know, the best way to describe that product is to give you an example. So you could be at a veterinarian's office and bring in your dog and it's sick. And the veterinarian tell you, hey, we've got to, we've got to do this procedure and it's going to cost three grand. And if you don't do it, you know, your dog's not going to be well. And so you as a consumer may not have that money. So you'll see at the point of sale, you know, some type of uh, marketing uh, pamphlet or, or sticker that says download our app. And if you download the app, you fill out a short uh, application for credit. Um, which we do not hold the, the note on. We immediately sell it to a bank, our banking partner. So we have no credit risk. But once it's approved real time, then we push a prepaid MasterCard with that exact amount to your phone uh, where you can go ahead and, and pay that veterinarian through their normal credit merchant uh, account. So they get paid their full amount that they would get paid. Um, and it's real time. And, you know, that's really important because it's the, it requires no integration into our customers' uh, point of sale systems. Okay, great. All right. That is all the questions, everyone. Thanks for all those great questions. And uh, thanks, everyone who uh, attended. Uh, and that's, that's it. So any, any closing remarks, Lewis, before we uh, wrap up? I don't know that, you know, I thank everybody for joining today. You know, again, UCO is not your normal microcap company. Again, we have a great customer base and we've been around for a long time and uh, we're going to continue to grow. And thanks again for your time. Thank you, Lois. And everyone, uh, we're going to be doing these every week now at uh, 1 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. And um, we're starting our coverage here on CEO Roadshow. We're going to have this replay available for those of you. I saw some people sign in late if you missed any any of uh, Lewis's presentation that's going to be available here uh, within the hour on CEOroadshow.com as well as the, um, the schedule for our upcoming webinars and, and the links to register for those. So a really interesting NASDAQ company, UCO, is certainly in a, in a space that is uh, seems recession-proof right now. People still have to spend money and more and more people, I think, are, are spending money with these prepaid cards. More merchants are using them. So it's a, it's a hot market. It's a solid company with great revenues. Um, you know, it's one of, I would say, the few hidden gems in the market right now. And those are the kind of companies we're looking for. So Lewis, pleasure having you on. Uh, we'll see you next week. Everyone else, take care. Uh, until next time, we'll see you. Thank you. Thank you.